Morning show here on the Rise News. I'm Adesso Moron. And I'm Rafaya Saini. What a great way to start. Indeed. It's fantastic <laughs> live TV. Well, from being a first runner up on the Idols West Africa over a decade ago to having numerous collaborations and performances with iconic musicians, Omaomi Megbele, popularly known as Omaomi, singer, songwriter, has become a music powerhouse and a force to reckon with in the Nigerian music industry. Well, she joins us now this morning to talk on the show about her journey, the Nigerian music industry, and more. Did we also add she's an actress? Mm -hmm. Good morning, Good Amami. Morning. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank and you. did we also add she's an entrepreneur? Let's, yes, let's, entrepreneur, let's, 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 actor, philanthropist. <laughs> so many things. Let's, let's start with your friendship with Aww. another very good friend. <laughs> Uh, Waji <laughs> and you guys even coming together and doing a business and setting yeah. up a company and turning mm -hmm. out your first movie. I mean, talk us through that. So we, we've, we've, we've been pretty much involved in each other's um, businesses for a while now. And, you know, as much as we usually outsource some of all these things to mm. producers and directors to shoot our music videos and stuff, we've, we were usually very hands-on, you know. We, we, so we just decided, come, let's put our money where our mouth mm -hmm. is. You know, and we, we're really interested in telling stories. We're really interested in, you know, like having our own form of narrative, you know, in this generation where we are, well, well rather where we found ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we just decided, you know what, let's come together, let's do this. So right now, She Is is one of the first um, product, major productions that we put out. Um, it was in the cinemas for like about two months, mm -hmm. and it did quite well. And we have like um, one movie and one series as I'm talking to you now, it's on our table. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, you have so many interests. I mean, songwriter, singer, actress, ambassador, oh, entrepreneur. Yeah. Which is your favorite interest? I, I, I just like to, the one thing is that I know how to space myself. Mm -hmm. So I, if I, I enjoy everything I do, if I don't enjoy it, I won't do it. Oh, mother, but, wife, <laughs> so, well. so I just know how to space myself. Um, but I enjoy everything I do, so I won't say, um, one is my favorite, but I'm enjoying acting now. Mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying it. I was in uh, the, the new movie that Moabudu is putting out soon. It's called Oloture. Mm -hmm. I was in there as well. You know, so I have like about three movies under my belt that mm -hmm. came out this year. 
You know, there was one called Night Bus to Lagos, which was nice as well. So, what do you enjoy the most about acting? I mean, I mean, what does acting do for you? Um, well, it just gives me the opportunity to be other people. Mm. You know, um, I, I'm multifaceted. Now they speak Yoruba. I'm I'm plenty people, sha. Yeah. You know, so it just gives you the opportunity to just go into yourself and just bring out one character and say, today you are Monsuratu. And just go with it, you know. Mm. So that's what that's what I enjoy about it. Well, you seem to be gliding. Let's talk about the music industry because yeah. uh, um, um, Waje is your best friend. She was on the show a couple of weeks ago, yeah. nice. and you know we had to bring her to talk about her video, that video that went viral, and her talking about threatening to quit music. Yeah. How really is it difficult to break through in the Nigerian music industry as a female? Because you seem to be gliding. I mean, just over the weekend you had. A listening party for mm -hmm. your EP mm -hmm. seems easy for you. It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, let me say I'm blessed with a very good team. Mm. Um, I have a very good team of people who work around me. I've been working with um, List Entertainment now for over nine years, mm. so I, I I think so. Nonetheless, it's not easy. It's very difficult, and dare I say, it's twice as difficult for females in the industry. It doesn't come easy, and you know, I don't know. I'm not speaking for everybody, but for myself, I'm set in my ways. You know, so sometimes I try to, you know, do the kind of things that will make me seem appealing in this um, age and time. But sometimes I'm also set in my ways and I insist that this is who I am. This is the kind of music I want to make and this is the kind of person I want to be in the industry. So I will stick to it. If you know, like, uh, go rest for... <laughs> so, so speaking of that... You, you, you joined the, Banku, uh, the Zanku bandwagon yes, very, I did, I did, I did. very soon. I did. And, and that got rave reviews. I mean, a lot of people looked at it and said, ah, oh, oh, oh. Are you, are you there to take it to worry? You there to take the legal street culture? To worry? You know what the so, thing to, is? I, I, how, how, what was even the thought process behind don't that? Don't box first? me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thought process. Don't box me. I don't like being boxed. I do from the beginning, the moment, the, in fact, the first single I did, I told you. I said, whether I'm a quiet or whether I'm a jazz, Afrobeat or dancehall, mm. let's just get in the music. That's my first single. So mommy mm. doesn't have a genre. She doesn't. Mm. I enjoy it. the music, no sweetie. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. I play her, my jam album. <laughs> <laughs> it's sweet. So sometimes you'll be like, oh, that's not her sound. But the thing is, there are different sounds to different, like people like one type of a mommy. Other people like another type of a mommy. I sang Make Believe, what you're seeing on the screen. Uh -huh. um, Megbele is not I go go, mm -hmm. or if you ask me, you know, neither is it in the music. I'm talking about even the popular songs that I've done. Mm -hmm. So I sometimes I go from high life mm -hmm. to reggae to neo soul to jazz. It's just as the music they do me. Let, let's go to Megbele because Megbele was sort of a, a tribute. Yes. And it goes back to your core, your start in worry, mm -hmm. you know, also sort of like a tribute to your dad. Yes, to my dad. Most importantly, who was, I guess a lot of people don't know, That's at some point, well. <laughs> was, was, was a speaker, right? No, my, fa my father's brother Your was father's a speaker, brother was, yes. a was a speaker of the Delta State House of Assembly. Yeah. Uh, but most importantly, it was sort of like a, a direct, sort of like an ode to, okay, this is where I am from. Yeah. Ikurede Shakiri. Yeah. I saw a lot of MacIval in that yeah. video. Yeah, you're Mac bringing your worry self. Oh. <laughs> I saw oh, Makaiva in that video. Uh, I saw a little bit of Alsa Quotas yes, and things everywhere. like that. Okay, Ray, okay, post office, you and, know. And things like yeah. that. We, so it, it, we just went home. I just mm. went home. Um, it was during the coronation, and um, I was going to pay homage to the then um, late Olu of Wari. Ogiame. Okay, yes, yeah, so Ogiame, yeah. And um, so I just went home. Uh, I told my brothers, my sisters, I told my mom, I, told, I said, I'm coming home, mm. and I want to come home with paparazzi, mm. you understand? So we're shooting it. And then, coincidentally, I also had, like, um, an, a media house that was also shooting that journey, mm -hmm. you know? So I just took um, clips from everywhere and just put it together. So it was, it was a beautiful time for me because <clears throat> it, I just needed people to know where I'm from. And that was the year that I also got married. Oh. So it was sort of like saying, okay, I'm still on my own, so let me etch the name in so people will not forget. What people will not start 
Olive my husband. <laughs> and you came in with, with, with the plane at Osubi. Which yes, Osubi? I went to Osubi, yes. And I went to my secondary school, College of Education Demonstration Secondary School. I went to my primary school, mm. Nana Primary School. Mm. I work out. Awaka, mm. awaka. How much of your background influences your music? I mean, that is a reminder of where you're from. Yeah. But when you look at your music, I mean, from your first album, if I get that correctly, Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. to the EP you just um, released, released. How released. much of an influence does Wari, your background, have? Uh, not, not a lot. Mm. Uh, mm. Well, the only thing I would say is that Every my 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 I've, I've, I lived in different places. Mm -hmm. I'm naturally a worry girl, mm -hmm. but I I spent a lot of time in Port Harcourt. I used to travel to Lagos a lot, and then I schooled in Ekboma. Mm -hmm. So I've been really inf and then I'm the twelfth child of fourteen children. Wow. So you know I have like elder ones who use some of them used to listen to reggae. Other ones used to listen to like um, Louis Vandross, Anita Baker, R &B, you know, that yeah. R&B-ish, mm. you know, so everybody had like a different sound. And then my mom was Mary Makeba. My father was a jazz connoisseur while he was alive. So mm. I was just influenced by all those, you know, people around me and the kind of music I was hearing. And my character and my character, I don't know mm. where I carry on from, mm. <laughs> Let's dial back. Yes, dial back. <laughs> Idols. Ooh. Memories. I'm telling you, man. The journey, mm -hmm. how it started. I mean, how did you even... Because I, I still feel, Amami, you need to write a book on your idol oh, story. Come on. And, and, and you <laughs> haven't really written that book yet. Because you came out of nothing, you are a wild card, and you kept on growing. And, yeah. I, and I remember that I watched your journey yeah. on Thank the you. big screen. Thank you. Can, can you just take us through that journey a little bit? Um... I was in Port Harcourt. I was um, working in my elder brother's law firm, like you said, making next to nothing. I was waiting to go to law school. And uh, it was that point in time where everybody would be like, ah. uh, American Idols just mm -hmm. came out then. Mm -hmm. And then when we're watching, like, oh, this girl cannot sing. Oh, what's this boy doing? Mm -hmm. So it was more like my brother's son. We're like, eh, she, Nigeria own has come, or West Africa. Better go and audition, because you'll be here abusing people. Mm -hmm. You know, so. It was just something that I just went to do. So I went to Calabar, auditioned, and made it through. <laughs> mm. And I called and I said, called my uh, elder brother. I said, I'm not going to come to work next week. Where are you going to? I'm going to Lagos. So I made it, you know, into. And then I went to Lagos, and I just kept going. I don't, I don't know, I don't know why. Honestly, I don't know. I can only attribute it to now, God. Mm. Mm. You know, from then till now, that's the same thing I've been saying. I don't know why. I just kept on. And for every week, I felt I would leave. You but stay. I'm staying. You know, mm. I will fight. I'll fight. I will perform. Ah, today, they will say, okay, how are we going to do that? I said, I'm going to lie down on the ground and start my song. <laughs> 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 there was one song I started from the ground. I bruise easily. Yeah. And I said, I lie down for ground. And somehow, I mean, they don't go no, did she? <laughs> <laughs> Next time, they say, okay, what are you doing? I say, ah, today, I'm doing this one. When they were uh, making our costumes, then Larry that's over, she now said, what do you want to? She now made one costume for me. I said, Auntie Larry, see this part of this dress, we'll tear this part. <laughs> this leg must be open. Mm. When I did a kwe onye kwe yeah. so, I said, this part must be open. So gradually, everything that shaped me started from there. Mm. You know, so I wear the big hair, I wear the short dresses, people liked it. So it just stuck. One time after that time, I went to perform at a gig. And I wore an um, Ankara short mm. dress. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, I love what you're wearing. Mm. Who made it? Not there. I just said, okay, mommy, respect yourself. Find big hair, make you do it. Find <laughs> Ankara dress, make you do it. <laughs> and while you got to the final of that idol, I mean, a lot of people are still split between you and, and TV. And they kept, uh, they were like, some, some people said, you know, it was she you. She should have won. She should have won. Yeah. Some people say, to me. I mean, won. how did you guys take it on to the fact that you guys are from the South South? And yeah. some other people felt it was like a South South agenda. It was a South South agenda. It's not yeah. spelled too. It was a South South agenda. As in, it was that big. But one thing is that Timmy Dakolo is an amazing singer. And at some point, was my friend then, is my friend now. But you know, in our competition, we'll go quarrel, we'll go settle, we'll quarrel, we'll settle. So you guys actually did quarrel? Oh, yes, we did. But it was way after um, idols. But not heavy, not yeah. all this means. You know, normal misunderstanding. Get away, Joe. Then yeah. after, I'm angry with you, I'm angry with you. Go away, Joe. We don't settle. You know? 
So then during Idols, it was, I had like, we started together. We, first of all, we auditioned in Calabar together. together. Mm -hmm. So we were like, we were, there were a couple of us, Eric, late Eric, um, yeah, Arubai, yeah, Arubai, um, uh, Uche, um, and uh, Jody, Jody, was, Jody was more of a loner, yeah. but Jody was somebody we used to go and meet to say, Jody, please teach us. Because Jody was a perfect teacher. Jody yeah. would make mistakes from yeah. Tyson Go. Yeah. So it was just, we were all just like close meets, and we're yeah. all like South, South, Niger Delta, yeah. you know, everybody ginger. And Jody was like your worry sister. You understand? Yeah. So it, when we got to that point, people were asking that, why were you happy? that he won, you were supposed, I said, was I supposed to cry out of there? First of all, I felt like if I didn't win, I would want Timmy Dakolo to win. Because Timmy was also a fighter. You know, he was resilient too. And for every time he always used to come back strong and his voice is amazing. So I was happy, I got that far. A lot of people say after winning competitions like that, to take it to the next level is always the problem. Mm -hmm. And this is also, you know, the dichotomy and the fight. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have, have, have won things like that, you mm -hmm. know, singing competitions like that. Mm -hmm. And to make a career and forge out of it is always problematic. Yeah. I mean, what was the transition journey like for your mama? Because I know it didn't come easy. I know they made promises. They fulfilled their promises, but it's only... They did not fulfill any promise, honey. Whoa. Not. So idols didn't fulfill their promises? Don't be well, on live TV. No, we should not be bringing up people's legs like that. It just can't move on to questions. So, <laughs> they, so we think they should fulfill their promises. They should fulfill their promises. But so promises were not fulfilled. How did that hit you afterwards? Because there were there were promises made out there. You're going to be given a car. You're going to be given a recording oh, contract. No, that was Timmy. Over, over a million of, and the winner and the promises that were made to you to well, the help I got a rock, I got I got a recording deal mm -hmm. um, as well. Uh, but you know now, nah, I came into the industry. As I say, ah, this industry is sweet. I'm money day inside. Uh, I said, okay, I'm out. So I started out, by the time we finished, I started out, I started performing in different places, performing other people's song, you know, and then it got to this point where they were like, ah, don't you have your own? Are you going to be coming to, because, you know, oh, the, if you ask me was, it's not if you ask me, I'm sorry, um, uh, Onyeko Wenu's song that I, I covered was yeah. really good then. So I used to go and perform at gigs and actually get paid to perform, to cover other people's song. So um, I was at home one day and I got a call Still green in Lagos, didn't know anywhere. I got a call from Cobams, and then he was like, "Hi, your mom." I was like, ah, "Who is speaking?" He said, "Cobams." I said, "Cobams." Oh, mm. He said, "Yes." Ah, ah. He said, um, "I have this uh, project that I need you to come and voice. Um, I just it's a brief that I'm pushing to a particular company. Come and do it. Mm. If they like it, we'll take it from there." That was my first endorsement. Mm. So I went. I did the song. They loved it, and I got nice figures like more than mm -hmm. you know, more than five zeros wow do you understand mm -hmm. and then i got to come i got to um follow p square i was opening for them because we had like four locations that we had to go to mm. that was the first brand i got associated with so that's how i held cobans i said ah, as me and you don't do this one now i beg my first single mm. and, I saw we do them. and so that's why most of the songs that have you know made me really popular like um if you ask me and uh, in the music was uh, produced by Cobham Sasuko. Indeed. You talked about law initially, and I, I want to ask, would you ever practice law again? Have you dusted those books anytime? I haven't dusted those <laughs> books anytime. And did you finally go to law school? I didn't. So you're done with law? I'm not. <laughs> so do you, do you hope to go to law school anytime At some soon? point, but I know that, ah, they will laugh at me well, well. They'll be like, ah, ah, come on me. Can you imagine if you had gone to law schools? I saw one of my classmates. He's, I left school in 2005. So that would be, if I had gone to law school, I'd be like 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, very well. But I, I, didn't, I didn't. But Let's it's never too late because of your, so, sorry, just mm -hmm. my, your colleague uh, in the industry, Helen Paul, yeah. got a PhD recently. Helen Paul, like book. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about what you like. Yeah. Um, the EP you um, released, yeah. the Listen Party. Yeah. What is this EP about? How would you describe it? I think it's more of an LP than an EP. Okay. Uh, first of all, but yeah, I called it an EP initially. So, no, I can you make this distinction for the sake of our lay listeners? Oh, sorry. Yeah. An, an, yeah. EP yeah. Is, yeah. an EP is an extended play. It's, okay. it's like more than one single. Mm -hmm. Originally, EPs are supposed to be like one or two songs, yeah. and then you have like the dub version and the instrumental version and all of that. So that's like an extended play of a couple of songs. And then an LP is like a long play. Mm -hmm. okay. so but not an album. It's not so. an album, because an album should 
normally be above 10 tracks. An LP is seven, eight tracks. Okay. An EP should not be more than six tracks. Good. So how would you describe this? What has changed from Wonder Woman to this? Um, what is I'm, different? I'm, I'm grown. I'm, I'm grown. That's just it, basically. I'm grown and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm grown. Um, so it has it reflects in my music. I'm also not like sh telling you people that I'm a two-seller. Yeah, because I've grown. Mm -hmm. It just shows that I see things um, with in a more heightened, you know, POV right now, point of view. Mm -hmm. And from that point of view, how do you describe the Nigerian music industry now with the new entrance? I mean, there's been a lot of controversy mm -hmm. over the kind of songs they sing. Um, you know, some even get into trouble with the, with the songs yeah. they're singing. Recently, we know of uh, the issue of Naira Mali and all mm -hmm. of that. How would you describe the Nigerian music industry, especially for the new entrants? Well, the kind of songs we're playing now. Well, I want you to understand that there are no rules. Because at the end of the day, the, 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 if we're trying to measure some the musical, whatever you call it, and saying, oh, I remember those days when people used to make sense with their music. Mm -hmm. Those days, when the people where Wunafi say they make sense. It did the people where they before them, we say, we have this one singing. Mm. You know, so music is constantly evolving. You know, you can decide that, oh, I'm setting my ways, I'm going to make music the way I want. Or I'm just going to go into the studio and say something, incoherent things from beginning to end. As long as it's music, there are no rules. Because you cannot tell somebody that is singing that, then you now go to uh, worry mm. and tell somebody that is singing in a robot with the way that they are going to be doing their thing. You now say, mm -hmm. oh, you are... You're not even, you know, you're not even singing it well. You're too local. Obuton, Obuton, you, do you understand? Oh, oh, pa. Yeah, oh, pa. They are not singing well, you know. Mm -mm. So there are no rules. That's what I always tell people. If you like the music, enjoy it. That's why it's made. Let's talk about the business of music, Omaomi. Let's talk about piracy. <laughs> Let's talk about how viable is the music industry in terms of money? Uh, are you fulfilled? And pirates and piracy. Three things. First one is um, how viable. Mm. It is very viable. If you are able to break through, it is very viable. It is a, it is a money-making industry. And the thing about it is that it makes a lot, it creates employment and it makes a lot of money for everybody, not just the artists, mm. the producers. Because right now, it's not like before, where Alaba would just corner you, you know? Right now, we have numbers. Most of the music is being sold online. On, on online platforms, so we have numbers. Everything is um, transparent. You can mm. see it. You know, so it's very viable. Makes money for almost everybody involved. Um, am I fulfilled? Yes, I would love to think so. Um, I'm not usually the sort of person that likes to amass wealth. By the mm. way, or I have this mentality: you can't stay in more than one house. You can't drive more than one car at a mm. time. So I'm usually a very, I'm a very simple person at heart. So I'm very content. Uh, piracy, not as much anymore. Oh. Uh, yeah, not as much How anymore. How did you guys win the war? Uh, we didn't win the war, but we, we didn't win the... Which one be battle, which one be war? <laughs> we won war. One is still we going. The battle. <laughs> the the war because we still have pirates and trolls online as well who mm. steal your music. Uh, see, they don't even go. You know, so not, how many people, you know? And that's most of the places where they can pirate it from. Um, sending your songs um, on via soft copies um, on all these blogs. The big blogs, are, are, they don't really want trouble, you know. So even if your music leaks, they won't load it up. But these small, small ones with their three, four, five followers, these are, these are, those are the ones that load it up. <laughs> so if three people tiff my song, as opposed to hundreds of thousands that will buy it, I'm good. Do Let's talk about okay. the, the women in the industry. Sorry, I'm looking at me with this. Yeah, he carried on my business. <laughs> Let's talk about the women in the industry because there's this notion that uh, although very few, like we see in most parts of the world, the men dominate the mm. industry, in Nigeria, there's a friction. You guys don't like to work together. Is that notion correct? I mean, you have a best friend, YJ, who's mm -hmm. also in industry. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people would not say that. Uh, we had recently this viral ch challenge by Keith Daniel, mm. which opened a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we cannot say the cuss word on air, yeah. but remember that challenge. Mm -hmm. So there's this notion that the female artists don't like to work together. Is that true? And why is that so? Um, the female artists don't work together doesn't mean they don't want to or they don't like to work together. If I have a song that I feel like Yemi or Tiwa or Victoria or Sheishe should be on, mm -hmm. I would love for them to be on the song. I don't know why. Most times when I write music, I always have a preconceived notion of who I'm going to put on the music. 
That's um, that's exactly what I did with a play a play that I featured Angelique Kijo. Mm. I had I wrote that song three years before and knew already that I wanted Angelique on the song. You know, so I, I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody. I'm speaking for myself. I, I most times when I write music, it, it I, you know you, you write for opposites attract. You need somebody that will balance it out. The guys who make music together, it's good and fine, but I don't think so. I think we're cool. Mm. I think we're all cool. Um, I'm cool with everybody, you know, as much as Waja is my friend. And here's the funny thing. Mm -hmm. Aside from the song that Waja and I did together for That She Is, we've not worked on anything together. True. Do you Ooh. understand? So would you say that because we've not worked on anything together doesn't mean we don't support each other? That's not right. Mm. But, but, but I mean, I, I, I see uh, Anissa's point of view because we've heard of a lot of animosity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's sort of like a cat, cat fight no, sometimes. Sometime. I, mean, I mean, let me put it out there. Yes, put it. I have never seen a Victoria Kimani work with Itiwa Savage. And we all know that in that challenge, challenge she that says was, why. No. She says why. Here's the thing. Eh? Sometimes we use music to put out um, things with the pepels for mm -hmm. body. Mm. Or sometimes we just use it to look for trouble. Mm. Uh, there's a song that is raining till tomorrow. Dele Momodu, na my boy, mm. na my boy. Anybody kill the video? Bob did know they followed the video, still they laugh till tomorrow. There are sometimes that so these these frictions happen. But is that it doesn't mean that we're going to now, you know, sit on it with Joko and say, mm. Mm -mm. It, we don't. We don't have to. I'm sure that at some point you see everybody vibing together, everybody. Uh, you know, having fun and gisting together. So it doesn't really, I, I feel like it's not fair for that um, um, male um, artists have issues all the time and nobody brings it to the limelight. They don't sit on it the way they sit on women. I feel like um, we don't encourage the women to want to be, you know, to want to work together. Whenever you find, when I, is that? it's, I'm sorry, it's the media. It's not. It's us? Yeah. It's us? <laughs> it's you. Because you guys so. heighten it. You guys make it seem like, I'm sorry, I'm not pointing fingers at just you, but you make it seem like it's more than it is, you know, because guys have cat fights all the time. Guys, do you know how many people abuse people inside that, that challenge? Mm -hmm. There was a guy that was actually abusing a girl that he used to date that dumped him, mm -hmm. but they were both artists, and they didn't rise because you people didn't dig. But... This Victoria thing wants to half line. How now take no thing that she didn't talk about mm. because of state, you know? So sometimes I just feel like there's no need to um, give me the word. There's no need to blow it out of yeah, proportion. Sure, yeah. It's just it's just normal. It's like Biggie and Tupac. And we are doing that again. Okay. <laughs> one word about this because we hear there are allegations of streaming companies be the biggest winner in this new media of streaming music. Yeah. What's your one word and one take about online streaming music? I think it's good. Even if, okay, good. Even if um, the streaming companies are making a lot of money out of it, they created this platform. And it's, it's a normal, Alaba, you don't go see them. You won't even see it. Do you understand? Those times when they used to sell CDs, you won't see the money. They will probably give you like an upfront and they're making like 300 or 400% on top of what they're giving you. But streaming companies will tell you, these are the numbers. Give me 45%, give me 30%, depending on how big you are. And they promote the music on all their platforms. Mm -hmm. They push your music as well. If you go around in Lagos State, you'll see billboards where streaming companies will tell you, download uh, In Her Feelings by Oma Omi. Yes, I'm selling my market. <laughs> Do you understand? On these things, your name is there, your face is there. If they give you that money on your own, would you be able to afford to pay for a billboard? So they're actually putting in the money. They have people that they're paying. Mm. Thank you very much. That's a good way to leave it. Oh, Mommy McBelly, thank you so much for coming on the Morning Show on the Rise this morning. We wish you the best. Thank you.